In today's video, I'm going to be covering these things. What are these? These are the probes from the Govi wireless meat thermometer. I'm going to show you how I integrated this device in a home assistant, how I set up the display on my dashboard, and I'm going to tell you what I think about the solution as a whole. So stay tuned. Welcome, I'm Jeff with Fast How To. For now anyway, I'm still looking for a new name for the channel because Fast How To doesn't show up so well in YouTube search results. You get all kinds of nonsense about fasting programs for weight loss and all manner of other shit. Does it look like I'm the host of a weight loss channel? If you answered yes, we need to have a chat. If you've got any good ideas for a channel name, drop them in the comments section and if I pick yours, I'll send you some free smart home stuff, as long as you're in the continental US. Shipping costs, export restrictions, power requirements, you know how it is. In any event, I'm excited to show you a product that I picked up to make grilling and smoking easier. Since eating grilled and smoked foods are some of my favorite things, I was looking for a way to keep an eye on my smoker that didn't involve me having to sit there and stare at the temperature gauge in the lid for hours and hours on end while it was slowly doing its thing. Now, there's a lot of various devices on the market that do this, but my other requirement, of course, was that it integrate in Home Assistant, since I have a pretty strict rule about not wanting to have to use a thousand different apps for everything on a daily basis. I did a bit of research and settled on this. This is a four probe temperature monitor that integrates with Home Assistant via Bluetooth made by Govi. I'm sure many of you are already familiar with that brand name from their great smart lighting solutions, like the two RGB LED post lamps here behind me. Now, I'll admit to a healthy dose of initial skepticism about this particular product, since I wasn't sure how well it would hold up to the temperatures or how accurate it would be. Now, I'm kind of a nerd about everything, not just home automation, so I was pretty married to my thermopen. But since this requires that I physically get up, go outside, unfold the probe, open the lid of the smoker, let out a whole bunch of heat, stab this thing into the meat, read it, close the lid, wipe off the probe, fold it back up, come back inside, then rinse and repeat, I was looking for a better way. So I saw this thing on sale on Amazon, and I did a bit of research and saw that there was an integration for it and that the product itself had gotten some pretty good reviews, so I jumped in. At the time of this video, you can pick this up on Amazon for 50 bucks. Uh, check the description below for a link. It showed up a couple weeks ago, and since then I've used it twice. Once to smoke a couple racks of ribs, and once to smoke some lake trout. It did great. In the box, you get the controller, this guy here, which is rechargeable via USB-C. Now, I'll admit to not being a big fan of this particular design decision. I would much rather have this thing run on AA or AAA batteries, or hell, even 9 volt. I prefer old school batteries for stuff like this, since the day will inevitably come when I want to run the smoker, but this thing will be dead. And instead of putting in new batteries, I'll have to wait for it to charge. The battery is listed at 3000 milliamps, and Govi claims it'll last up to 40 hours on a full charge. Hopefully I don't ever have to worry about finding out about that. Anyway, it's got nice little rubber feet, and it's also got a magnet. So I just use the magnet to stick it to one of the legs on my smoker. Works great. On the bottom of the unit are four numbered jacks, one for each of the four included temperature probes, and you also get two of these stands to use with the probe to take the air temperature. You just slide this in between the wires on your grill grate like this and put a probe through it. Easy. The cables appear to be very high quality and they're wrapped with a wire mesh. I've slammed them in the lid of my smoker with no ill effect. My only real complaint is that at just 40 inches long, uh, the cables aren't very lengthy. So if you've got a large smoker, you may end up needing two or more of these devices to cover the whole thing. Keep in mind that this is plastic, so you don't want to stick it to the lid of the smoker or anywhere else where it's going to get hot. 
Cable length aside, the probes themselves are quite nice, and they feel pretty hefty thanks to this nice knurled metal handle. Uh, this makes them very easy to insert or remove with wet or greasy hands, or when wearing gloves. I, I prefer to use welding gloves myself. Govi claims that the probes are capable of measuring temperatures from 32 to 572 degrees Fahrenheit, though I don't ever intend to use them at such high or low temperatures. The claimed accuracy is plus or minus 1.8 degrees Fahrenheit, which is more than good enough for smoking, in my opinion, as a home cook. Since the oven in your kitchen isn't used above 425 or 450 most of the time, you could also use this to monitor your Thanksgiving turkey or a roast or anything else like that as well. The possibilities really are endless. The little manual included in the box tells you all about it in case this is your first Govi device. Uh, to get started, you need to download and install the Govi Home app, which I already had because of these lights here behind me. So I just launched the app, tapped the plus up in the corner to add the device to activate it, and then it popped up in Home Assistant as soon as my ESP32 Bluetooth proxy discovered it. It uses the Govi Bluetooth integration, as you can see here, and shows up as one device with 13 entities. Now, I'll admit to not using the alarm settings just yet, but once I start using them, I'll include it in a follow-up video. I did try to write an automation to warn me when the smoker temp dropped so that I knew to go and add more wood, but it didn't work. I'm not sure what I did wrong there. But during those couple of uses, the only things that I were really concerned about were the temperature from the four probes that would show me what I was after, which was the temperature of the meat and the temperature the smoker was running at. So here's what I did. Initially, I just stuck all four of them on my dashboard using an entities card on my backyard view. That was functional, but it was kind of ugly since it showed values for probes that weren't connected and it showed them on the dashboard all the time. For a device that's only limited use and display only at that, you don't really interact with it, that was suboptimal. Here you can see probe number four was connected and the smoker was coming up to temp. You can tell the other three weren't connected because the displayed temperature is 32 degrees. I didn't like the look of that, so while I waited for the smoker to come up to temp, I screwed around with my dashboard a bit. I read some documentation, figured out that I could actually use conditions on the entities card to only display the entities when their value was above 32 degrees. Now, when I smoked these ribs, I used three different probes. Numbers one, two, and four. One and two, I stuck one in each of the rack of ribs that I was smoking, and four was the air temp. Here's what it looked like after I got it cleaned up and got some proper labels on the probes. When I did the trout a few days later, I only used probe number four for air temp. It worked great. As soon as I turned on the device and it started reading temperature, that probe showed up on the dashboard. This was better, but when none of them were in use, I still had a card that said barbecue on it and nothing else displayed. Then, I figured out that you could nest conditions inside of conditions, so I just hit the entire card when it's not in use. Now my backyard dashboard looks like this. As you can see when we edit it, there's a new card that shows up, which is the conditional card with the super original title of barbecue. That's what it looks like on my dashboard before I made it a conditional card. Now that it's a conditional card, it's hidden, and it'll only show up when it's powered on and a probe is connected. Even then, only probes that are connected will be displayed. You won't see the rows for any unconnected probes. Here's the code for how I accomplished that. You can go ahead and pause the video and copy it all down or take a screenshot or whatever. Or if you're one of my patrons watching this video on patreon.com without any advertisements, thank you for your support. You can just scroll up to the post where I uploaded the YAML files for this project and download the code and copy paste it right into your dashboard. Now, breaking down this code for you, this first block of code defines the conditional card and says that if any of the four temperature probes are reading over 32 degrees, then show the card. You'll need to change the entity lines to match the name of the sensors from your installation since they're not going to be named exactly the same as mine. Mine are just the default name, which is the model number, followed by an underscore, then the last four characters of the MAC address. 
The rest of this code, beginning with the line card, defines the entities that will be shown on the card. And each row is conditional so that it's only shown when that probe is reporting above 32 degrees. This hides the ones that aren't connected. I've also chosen to display a second line on each of the entities, which tells me when the last time the temperature was updated on each probe. That looks like this when it's in use. You may also want to change how they're labeled on your dashboard, which are these lines here. Again, on mine, probe number four is the air temperature. Then the last line on the bottom is the title of the main card. If you'd like to help support the channel by becoming a patron, there's a link in the description, or you can scan this QR code here. In addition to code from all my videos, patrons have access to download all the code from my Home Assistant setup, including my full automations, dashboard, and configuration YAML files, scripts, the works. At last count, there was over 11,000 lines of code. In addition, there are exclusive giveaways, free t-shirts from my videos, Discord access where I can help you with problems, and much, much more. Benefits start at just three bucks US per month, so stop by and check it out. If your home assistant server doesn't have Bluetooth, or if your smoker or grill is too far away and the Bluetooth won't reach, you should pick up one of these and make a Bluetooth proxy. What's this? This is an ESP32. They're super cheap on Amazon. You get a three pack for under 20 bucks. What's a Bluetooth proxy? Basically, it's a device that can connect to other Bluetooth devices and then communicate with your home assistant server via Wi-Fi to allow the Bluetooth device to ultimately communicate with home assistant over much longer distances than would normally be possible with just Bluetooth. You can use them for all sorts of things. I made a video already about how to set these up, so if you'd like to watch that, I'll leave a link to that video in the description as well. I'll also leave links to this Govee temperature monitor and to the ESP32s that I use in the description of this video as well. A couple updates since that video though. Now, I, I don't recommend using those M5 stack devices that I showed in that video. They stop working about every 24 hours, which is a real pain in the ass. And even these regular ESP32 devices, they're actually quite a bit cheaper. The other recommendation though, is to power these things from some type of a smart outlet that you can turn on and off. Because uh, even these ones, they still need to be rebooted about every 8 to 10 days. So you got to go unplug them, plug them back in. Much easier to just write an automation that'll power cycle them for you every few days or whatever using a smart plug. Quick though, before you go, my YouTube statistics tell me that chances are that you're not subscribed to my channel. If you found this content helpful, please consider subscribing so that you don't miss any of my future videos. I've got all sorts of cool stuff on the bench here that I'm working on so I'm sure you'll enjoy it. The next video I'm working on is about NFC tags, which you'll be able to find here if you're watching this video a couple weeks after I released it. Otherwise, please check out whatever video YouTube thinks you'll enjoy in the meantime. I hope you enjoyed today's video, and I hope that I was able to accomplish my goal of providing you some solid information about this GoV temperature monitor. Let me know in the comments if you pick one of these up and what you think of it. Thanks for watching. Can't wait to see you guys all again in the next video. Until then, go automate something, will ya?